Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for taking the time to join us today to celebrate Black journalists and the influence of Black cartoonists on the comic page. And today with us, we've got a very special panel, which includes Richard Prince, a veteran journalist, a columnist on diversity issues in the news business specifically, and political editorial content and organizer of the Journal Isms Roundtable. Richard, thank you so much for being with us here today. Glad to be here. And then now also we have Barbara Brandon Croft, who is an author, a cartoonist, and recently also participated in the Journalism Roundtable as well. Barbara, thank you for being with us here on this beautiful day. Thank you for having me. And then finally, we've also got Ray Billingsley, who won the National Cartoonist Society Award for Cartoonist of the Year. Congratulations for, Thank you. Ray's, for Ray's work on the popular syndicated comic, Curtis. This is the cartooning profession's highest honor, and Billingsley is the first Black cartoonist to receive the award. Um, Ray, once again, congratulations, and thank you for being with us here today. Thank you so much. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Glad to see everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a pleasure to have all three of you here, and thank you for making the time to make this work. Um, Richard, if it's all right, I'm going to start with you um, because you've been in this game or in this profession for decades. So do you mind telling us about the Journalism's Roundtable and how exactly it works and also the overall concept behind it? Okay. Um, well, we I have write a column now, as you mentioned, that's called Journalism, so it's journal-isms.com. It's hyphenated because it originated with the newspaper of the National Association of Black Journalists, which is called the NABJ Journal. So that's where the term journal, the part of the name comes from, and that's why it's hyphenated. In any case, uh, the journalism's column is about diversity issues in the news business, and it's about uh, uh, diversity and also issues of particular concern uh, or about uh, journalists who are Black, Latino, Asian American, and Native American. And simultaneously with, with the writing of that column, uh, a group of journalists uh, began to meet once a month in Washington, D.C. at a restaurant. And that eventually became known as the Journalism's Roundtable. We brought in speakers and uh, discussed issues of the day and issues of journalism. Uh, once the pandemic started in 2020, we moved that from uh, restaurants in Washington, D.C., and we opened it up by, by Zoom to people all around the country, and it enabled us to have, um, it was a silver lining, actually, of the whole COVID epidemic, because we were able to have people from actually all around the world join us if they could, if they could match the time zone difference. And uh, as, as, um, as panelists and as attendees, and the, so the atten attendance has skyrocketed then. And we've had, uh, uh, you know, all the issues of the day that, uh, that usually include diversity. For example, when we went right after the uh, uh, pullout from Afghanistan and we had some black journalists who had been in Afghanistan and got their perspective, which was totally different from what we'd seen in the mainstream media, which was, and people eventually caught up with this, that uh, we were in a place where we were not wanted, basically. And there was a lot of arrogance uh, on the part of the United States uh, in thinking that everybody wants to be just like us, because they don't. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they basically said, well, we could have told you this was going to happen. Uh, and that was, that was that. We had some fun uh, conversations also. Uh, the, uh, the producing team, record owning team of Gamble and Huff, uh, from the Philadelphia Sound. They're celebrating their 50th anniversary uh, last year. We had them, and then we had some people from the Motown Museum as well on the same, uh, at the same, uh, same uh, uh, conversation. Uh, and we've had people from the high ranking people from the Justice Department because that's always in the news. And then how we now, in this particular one, we had cartoonists of color because, as Ray will tell you, we were talking, uh, and he, uh, after he won his award, and he said that uh, you know he'd always liked he always wanted to get together with with other cartoonists uh, like him, uh, but they never found the time to do it. So we said, well, let's do it now. So we're, that's that's how this one came about. And uh, coming up in a few weeks, we're having uh, photojournalists of color uh, to talk about uh, what they're doing and their issues, uh, which all of your viewers can watch on Facebook if they if they like. So that's basically where we are. I mean, there's a lot more I could tell you. I mean, we we've talked about television. And issues of uh, 
uh, black women, particularly in television news and, and what rules govern their appearance, for example. And uh, uh, also this, we had another one on the subject matter uh, of black women in the, in the media that was pegged really to the R. Kelly uh, situation. So uh, we, I said that, that we, we try to stay on top of the news and, and with issues that people are talking about, but may not get the attention in other places that they would get here. It's genuinely fascinating, Richard. That is such a wide array of topics covered. And you mentioned some of the kind of recent inflection on Black cartoonists specifically. Um, how do you think that Black cartoonists can help influence society and also um, increase the representation of Black cartoonists um, in that realm? Well, uh, they can tell you that they don't feel that they are sufficiently represented. They can expand on that. And as, as I said, we don't, didn't just have black cartoonists, we had Hispanic cartoonists, uh, Native American cartoonists, and Asian American cartoonists. And all of them said basically the same thing, that, uh, you know, open the doors for us, please. <laughs> we, we have something to say. We're not here just to talk about talking turtles. Uh, and uh, there's a whole history behind this uh, that dates to, uh, to the black press, particularly in the case of uh, black cartoonists, which Barbara can talk about where uh, they had, you know, they, they, there were serious issues afoot and they, they have a voice and they wanted uh, uh, to add to the conversation. And as we all know, cartoons are much more easy to read than, uh, you know, tomes of text in, uh, in, uh, or along uh, television shows. I mean, you, you, it takes that long to, to, uh, to read a cartoon and to get the point. And uh, that's where they have their influence. Well, Richard, you mentioned alluding to uh, black cartoonists, so might as well uh, get the uh, perspective from one and from an award-winning one. Uh, Mr. Ray Billingsley, we want to congratulate you once again uh, for the award that you won. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank I think, you. Barbara, I think you're right on there with the uh, virtual round of applause here. So, Thank um, you. Thank you all. <laughs> So seriously, uh, obviously, congratulations. Uh, so you've been writing and drawing Curtis, which is syndicated in hundreds of newspapers. Um, right. Tell us about it and the, and the concept behind it. Uh, well, let's see. The, Curtis just celebrated his 33rd year, which has been really phenomenal for uh, strips of my genre. Uh, I, I'm in it for longevity, and I'm in it for inspiration's sake, uh, to sort of give a voice and to let young and older people know that uh, there is a place for you to voice your opinion if you want to. And uh, one of the things that Richard was talking about, uh, I could really speak on. Uh, one reason why a lot of Blacks uh, weren't allowed in is because uh, of this stereotype that we're all angry. All, all Black folks are angry. So they expect nothing but angry artwork and that's not always the case. The thing of it is we have different backgrounds. We have different experiences. So we write differently. Uh, we don't write about, you know, talking ducks and, and, and wise guy doorknobs and things like that. That's not in our makeup. Uh, every now and then we are going to touch upon some topical subjects. And it's things that need to be, need to be heard. Uh, I've told people before when they say, well, you don't write gags. I said, no, I don't. I don't write gags, I write situation comedy. Uh, people tend to forget just regular gags. So I said, you guys are knocking yourselves out and people don't even remember you the next week. When I'm doing a story, people bring it up from years ago. So uh, it's, it's just a whole different way of us working. And we all thought that um, when we were starting, uh, it would, break the barriers and bust the doors wide open. And that wasn't the case either. Um, we, we cracked the door open and we're peeking through, but it's like we're stuck in that doorway. We haven't gone through all the way yet. And uh, it's still a struggle. It's still a struggle. Um, it, it's hard to be heard by animation houses or, or publishing. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, I've been told before that um, in terms of books, that blacks don't read and that uh, whites wouldn't buy the book. So, um, you know, that sort of deters you, but 
it for me it just made me want to work harder uh made me want to get better and better and that led up to my uh getting that award because I, it's just in me to just keep working just keep well, I, i've been in this business all my life and um the only way to survive the the business is to to change uh stay up with things um you speak to your old audience but you also welcome in the new you know you don't leave out anyone and you try your best not to hurt people's feelings even though it's got to happen you know uh especially with a strip like mine where i speak uh about topical things every now and then someone gets a little ticked but you know it hey it only takes 7 seconds to read it shouldn't it shouldn't break your day but um, and and also like with Barbara I know she's got to go through the same thing because of her subject matter uh we just don't have a hard time of it but we're in it for the love of the craft and that's the real thing it's the love of the craft and the love of the people who are actually our our family base and also by the way perhaps uh, ray your award can inspire others uh potentially to 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 join the field as well uh, that's, um that's what i'm hoping and 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 with that in mind uh, mention some of the challenges and how we're looking at maybe more of a crack through the door in terms of uh black cartoonists um i know you kind of touched on this a little bit what do you think is the solution or how we can kind of turn that crack into more of a door wide open situation moving well, forward Well there's a, a few things actually uh more blacks have to be really serious about this business cuz they they don't really know what a grind it is. Uh I see a lot of people who are posting things uh like on Instagram or or um Facebook or their site or something like that and they can only post for a tops maybe 3 months and they get tired. And you don't know that this is a very hard business to do. uh no matter what happens in your life you've got to put it out birth death graduations anything you still got to meet that deadline so um a lot of people aren't ready for it that way uh in in a way the computer sort of messes things up because it's instant gratification you put it out there and you say I'm a cartoonist you're a cartoonist yeah but you're not really a working one uh with that it takes a lot of time it takes study it takes experience now uh, another fault is the syndicates the syndicates themselves uh they're very shall i say white <laughs> um, there yeah, are no way. blacks in any of the big positions and that's a problem because when you only have the same voices over and over you know they tend not to hear anyone else and uh next the problem is with the the clients and the newspapers itself uh for some reason they think that if they have one or two strips that's enough it's like it's the quota you know or we have curtis so we're not going to do where i'm coming from or vice versa it's that sort of thing and they, i mean they don't say we're not going to do bla- baby blues when they have high and lowest you know you have papers that have 30 strips and just one black because they feel it's a quota. So that that's a lot of the problem of it also. Um I don't really know how to solve that one because they have to be let in. And the thing of it is syndication is hard enough to get into. So um if you're doing uh any sort of minority representation, uh you got to give it an extra 50%. You got to do 150% for every 100% that the others do. Well, that's a fascinating answer, Ray, and obviously your first-hand knowledge and your award lends a lot of expertise to that. Uh Ray, thank you uh again for being part of this. Uh I do want to turn our attention over to Barbara Brennan Croft and uh Barbara, I want to ask you f- first and foremost about your dad, the famous uh, Brumsick uh Brum- Brumsick uh, Brennan Jr. Uh, your father was also a cartoonist and He was a creator of the the creator of the comic strip uh Luther. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Oh sure. So, uh my dad uh was one of the pioneer black cartoonists in that he was one of three uh black cartoonists that made it into syndication. Um so it's the first into the mainstream press. And by mainstream I do mean white press. So, um it was my dad, 
Maury Turner with We Pals, Ted Shearer with Quincy um, in the 60s, the late 60s, early 70s. Um, so he is one of our pioneer black cartoonists. He had a comic strip, Luther, that lasted for uh, like 15 years. I think it was over in um, 86, 1986. Um, and, um, and he did far more than Luther. He did editorial cartoons and for the black press and different other, other publications. And he couldn't help himself. He was a prolific. He just had to put the work out there. And Barbara, uh, I think it's worth, of course, focusing on yourself. Uh, do you mind telling us about your upcoming exhibit and the book that you're also working on? Yeah, so I had a comic strip called um, Where I'm Coming From. Uh, it was also syndicated. And that's another distinction my dad and I have. We make the only father and daughter um, cartoonists to be syndicated in the, in the mainstream press. And, and not that it's not ever passed down. Like sometimes fathers give it to their sons or like the Lockhorns, he gave it to his wife or um, there's another strip, gave it to his daughter, but um, um, it didn't get passed down. I had a, a completely different strip. Um, it was like 30 years apart, a completely different syndicate. Um, so my strip where I'm coming from was uh, women, all women, uh, talking heads basically, um, talking about um, um, everything um, from social issues to political issues. And, um, and my, my run was uh, 15 years um, being syndicated. And, and now I can't help myself because I still have to put something out because you get that bug and you have to, you know, as my dad would say, what a cartoonist's job is to um, observe, interpret and record. So you're, you, what you're doing is really telling what, we're being journalists, you know, we're telling the story, we're putting it down, we're, um, from our perspective, which um, often is funny, sometimes not, sometimes it's just enlightening, hopefully. Um, but yes, so um, I, I put together, um, along with uh, Tara Donahue, Donahue, we have a, an exhibit called Still, uh, Racism in America, a retrospective in cartoons. So it was interesting for us to go back through my dad's work and go back through my work and see how we covered the same topics 30 years apart. Exact same, you know, police brutality, you know, um, housing, gerrymandering, voter rights, all of it um, in different ways, 30 years apart. And we put together this exhibit that um, opened in New York um, and then COVID hit. <sighs> So um, it didn't get a chance, but the people at the Billy Ireland, um, and that's an Ohio State University, um, wanted to bring it to Ohio State, and they are. So um, in May, um, it opens there um, through October. And, um, and the book, um, which you asked me about, is a collection of my work, um, of where I'm coming from. And it's drawn in quarterly, um, who are publishing it, and they just um, felt they contacted me and said, they, there's a need to have um, your work um, um, memorialized, you know, in, in some kind of, they make beautiful books. Um, they're going to take my work and put a collection of all my work um, in this book. And that comes out in 2023. Well, congratulations in advance, Barbara. And, Thank you. Um, by the way, uh, quickly here, uh, we only have a little bit of um, time, but Barbara, I actually had a quick question for you. What, what were some of those biggest differences you noticed over the last 30 years and, and how you and your father were, wrote? Uh, differences, that's the problem because that's why we call it still because there weren't that many differences. You know, um, we are still talking about police brutality. You know, we are still talking about um, gerrymandering. We're still talking about the idea that you, that we, that you have to, ha we have to have voters' rights, you know, so we, um, the same topics, which was so amazing. We had a different style, a different style of drawing, but it's, it's the same topics over and over. Still, yeah. Well, I suppose on an optimistic note, the work that the three of you are doing can help, um, again, maybe break some of those um, barriers that you have so uh, described so well and also broken through in so many different ways. So um, want to go ahead and thank all three of you for being with us, Richard Prince, Barbara, Brandon Croft, as well as Ray Billingsley. We really appreciate um, your time and for all of you being with us here today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Definitely.
That was a really insightful uh, conversation. So we really appreciate the three of you uh, being with us here today. And again, look forward to um, continuing this conversation in future weeks, months, and years. All right. Great. All right. Oh, take can I care. Can add something? And that is Absolutely. The okay. Your viewers can watch the whole conversation that we had um, on the journalisms and all the other conversations we've been having on the journal-isms.com website. And click the tab that says Journalism's Roundtable. Journal-isms.com and then click on the Roundtable component. Exactly. Thank you for that as well, Richard. And again, thank you for all three of you being with us here today. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. See you all.